Hello, uh, uh, hello again. Uh, this is structural analysis made fun and easy. Uh, sorry about the presentation, but I've I just been busy at work and I got uh, I got to type this one up. But this is just uh, um, and a good example problem. So this is problems and examples and question solutions to chapter thirteen of beams deflections of beams that structural and stress analysis by THG Megson so this is uh, uh, this is this is like he calls a method of super superposition problem number th chapter 13 problem number 21 continuous beam T span to one degree statically indeterminate um, here's the beam uh, here and uh, um, it's got T spans like T span beams and so um, the level of difficulty of this is very easy uh, please like the video and stay tuned more to follow of this chapter and more a uh, bit more to this solution this is going to be in two parts so uh, please message me or leave a comment a any questions please subscribe to the channel for more videos like this uh, so let's get cracking on the question so I just drew out Sorry about the presentation. I, I got to do this again, but just to get me started. Uh, so it says the question says um, the beam shown in P thirteen twenty one is simply supported at each end and is provided with additional supports at mid span. If the beam carries a uniformly distributed load of intensity W and has a flexural rigidity EI, use the principle of superposition to determine the reactions in the support so he's got the answers there as well so get straight cracking on with it diagram is there two spans of L and you've got W, UDL and EI so the most important thing in this question if you didn't notice already the trick in this question is that the total length of the span is 2L so there's L and L two spans of L that's 2L overall and oh yeah so in the question it says use the principle of superposition to determine the reactions at the supports so in my humble opinion this is a copy of the flexibility method because if you read even read the chat read his notes on it you, you still use the deflection at B the sum of the deflection at B is going to be zero even if you do superposition basically saying um, release the reaction at B the, the beam is one degree uh, indeterminate so you release the reaction at B and then do superposition of, of, mo of moments to get the um, reaction but it, to me it's just the same as the flexibility method so um, I'll show you how, why I said that as well because so this is the release structure so it spans from A to, A to C instead of A to B so what we need first of all is to find the deflection at B and the maximum at mid span so the deflection of a, U, of a simply supported beam under a UDL is 5WL to the power of 4 divided by 384EI I've done a separate video on that if you want to if you want to find out how I how I got how they get that so the span is 2L but <coughs> what you've got to remember in this question L is equal to 2L so the deflection at B is equal to 5W 2L to the power of 4 divided by 384 EI um, and then you got so this is the now now we're going to apply the unit load where the support was at B so it's AC so we need to find delta P so from the previous video I think I've done a video on this one as well for a point load delta uh, the deflection under the point load at the middle is PL cubed over 48 EI but no trick in the question again that L is equal to 2L so it's PL P2L cubed over 48 EI um, so now we just got to balance delta B under uh, UDL uh, and delta delta B under the point load so delta uh, delta B P equals the delta P W. Sorry about the presentation again. So P L P two L cubed over four E I equals five W two L to the power of four three hundred eighty four E I. 
that means that oops that means that P equals 48EI over 48EI over 2L to the power of 3 times 5W2L to the power of 4 384EI so you cancel out the um, the cubed 2L of the bottom and the top cancel out the EI from the bottom and the top that leaves you with P equals 5L times 2L over 384 e, e, uh, that would have been EI so that means P equals 96 times 5WL over 384 uh, and 96 over 384 is 1 over 4 so that's 5WL over 4 that's what exactly what he says in the in the book there um, central support load is 5WL over 4 so usually uh, it would be over 8 if you did if it was W if this span was equal to L but he's made a trick by saying it's 2L um, so I just check just to prove that I'm right 96 over 384 is equal to 1 quarter so 96 times 4 equals 90 times 4 plus 6 times 4 equals 360 plus 24 is 384 so that's proved 5WL so we got the central one so now we've got to go back to basics with the original beam so um, go back to the original beam again the original conditions the question example from the book says find the reactions using superposition of moments um, so what we've got H A R A R B R C and L and L. So some of vertical forces R A plus R B plus R C minus W two R C. Um, the, for, the the forces acting upwards are R A R B plus R C and the forces acting downwards are W times two times L. L. And that equals to zero, so R A plus R B plus R C equals two W L two. Now now we know from previous calculation that R B equals five W L over four. So now um we can go back we can oh we can now take moments about A because we've got one our name which is R C. So R B times L uh, so oh yeah R B times L because L is in the middle I was going to say 2L but it's actually RB times L because it's one it's 1 times L plus RC times 2L RC times 2L because the lever arm is two, the whole span RB is the lever arm of one span and two, uh, the, the unit load down it the, the moment from the UDL is 2 times W times L squared and that is equal to WL to W so the the equivalent the equivalent point load for the UDL is W times 2L and then times that by L which is the lever arm because the, it will be in the center so RB times L plus RC times 2L minus W times 2L times L equals 0 rearranging that RB times L plus 2 RC L equals 2 WL squared we know that now we can put in the what we found in the uh, first bit RB equals 5WL divided by 4 so that's um, divide by oh sorry so you've got RBL plus 2RCL equals 2WL squared RB equals 5WL over 4 so 2RCL equals um, 2WL squared minus 5WL over 4 times L so that's LQ L squared so now you've got that equation that's from the moment this one's from the moment divide um, but divide out L and 2 on both sides that means RC RC uh, it's like this equation so divide both sides by 2 and L so RC because 2RC L divided by 2L is RC 2WL squared divided by 2L is WL and 5WL squared over 4 is 
5 WL over 8. So RC equals WL minus 5 WL over 8. So that's 8 over 8 minus 5 over 8. So that's 3 WL over 8. So RC equals 3 WL over 8. Right? But you can see for, by common sense that uh, that RC, you can see it tell by the common sense that R, RA is going to equal RC. But if you take moments about C, if you take if you want to do it a long way, you just take moments about C, and then you get the same answer. You could even just you can see by a inspection, isn't it? That RB is going to instead you just got the same equation, except that the sign's going to be around the other way and. It will be R A in this equation. In this equation, sorry, this equation. Take moments about B. So that's it. That's the end of part one. That was I. I did say it was a very simple um, solution. The only trick was that instead of L, you got two L. Um, so uh, since this is the end of part one, I'm going to do part two when I'm going to do um, show you the superposition of bending moments because I, I think that's actually quite important but it's missing from the textbook so if you could tune in for that one um, yeah please like the video sorry about the presentation I'm going to do this again in the word um, please uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and um, thanks a lot for watching